and we are live so good evening everyone and hoping you can join us tonight for adobe creative educator level two teaching just got more challenging we are learning about teaching long distance we are learning about the day-to-day -day challenges facing everyone we are remembering why we all gathered in the same room to share ideas work on a whiteboard and hold a pen in our hand. Now, more than ever, our passion for teaching drives us forward. We are discovering in I am. So, please uh, asking you if you're hearing me uh, clearly. Okay, so once more, good evening everyone and uh, welcome uh, to <laughs> Adobe Creative Educator Level 2. Ayan. So once more, good evening everyone. Uh, shout out to Sir Wilbert Aaron Chavez. Uy, from uh, Pamantasan ng Lungsod ng Muntinlupa. Ayan. And kay Sir Gigabit, shout out to you. And the uh, same to Sir R.V. Bartolome. Well, uh, actually tonight it's a different one. No? I, will, uh, I will attempt uh, to finally complete the Adobe Creative Educator uh, Level 2. Ayan. So, I'm going to be sharing to you guys the link for this. And kung, if you're uh, just new, new on hearing what Adobe Creative Educator is, and you haven't finished Level 1, uh, I'm hoping na you can uh, i'm hoping you can join me no join us in the doing level 1 kahit na this is uh intended to uh this live stream is in, in intention is to uh, finish adobe creative uh educator level 2 ayan so let me share uh to you guys uh acclaim ayan so if you finally completed uh, the Adobe Creative Educator Level One, and and then eventually Level Two, you you'll be uh, given a digital badge. Okay, ayan. So what you're seeing here are some of the badges that i have uh, collected a while ago ayan so i have here adobe creative educator level one so even uh, if you're uh, this is open also to uh, students who would like to be you know diba? it's an additional credential and having an additional credential diba? never hurts ayan mas okay na level up kaysa sa hindi ayan okay so in addition uh, we are also live in Twitch via Digital Creatives uh, Philippines. Ayan. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna be pasting. And I have, I have pasted the the link. Okay, so hoping you can 
uh, join me. Ayan, grab your laptop and uh, open up your Adobe Creative uh, apps. Ayan. So once more, please confirm no if you're hearing me parang kanina yung ano I'm not hearing the ano you know. Yung kaninang video na pinlay. Ayan. Okay, so hoping you can uh, join us. Sabay-sabay po tayo na uh, tapusin na. Let's <laughs> let's finish Ace. Ace 1 uh, and 2. Ayan. Now and for all. no uh, Actually, the, lev the creative uh, Ace 2 was... Uh, released last year pa. Ayan. So, ako ay huling-huli na rin, no? Kung may mas huling-huli na, huling-huli pa sa akin. Ayan. So, tapusin na po sana natin tonight para wala nang ano, no? Wala nang utang. Okay. In addition sa lahat po ng mga nag-register, uh, we're requesting you to register para madali po tayong magparaffle mamaya. Ayan. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. In addition, ah, uh, ang <laughs> ang taya po tonight. Ang pangalan ko po ay uh, Joe Mark and uh, inviting you to connect with me po uh, in uh, LinkedIn. Ayan. So, yan po yung uh, account ko sa LinkedIn. Also, shout out to our friends in Mikani Web. Ayan. Uh, Uh, please join our uh, group. Ayan, Mekani Web. Sir, paano yung mga walang uh, Photoshop sa desktop laptop? Ayan, actually, hindi pa tayo sure, uh, Sir Wilbert. As in, uh, I have no idea <laughs> what the, what what are the requirements for uh, ACE Level 2. But definitely, we will be using some Uh, Autodesk uh, apps. Ayan. To Sir RV, uh, the, the registration is, uh, I think it is in the description in YouTube. YouTube. Which uh, goes by the name of register here to qualify in our raffle draw. Ayan. Okay, yan. Yun lang, yun. Ewan, I'm not sure if pareho siya sa ano, no? Last time uh, sa training natin with Photoshop. Again, uh, in addition, I would like to thank everyone na sumama. At sana natuto po kayo sa Photoshop nung nakaraan with Sir Onel Pabico. Ayan, shout out to him. Many thanks. Ayan, and uh, hoping sana in the future, pag na-master nyo po yung mga Adobe softwares, you bring the laugh back. Ayan, by uh, volunteering ayan, in our community and by teaching, sharing what you know. Ayan, so in addition, ayan, join us. Okay, share ko lang din. We have, uh, we have our community, ayan, Digital Creatives uh, Philippines, wherein not only it caters Adobe softwares, but anything uh, pertaining to digital creativity, Uh, using any digital creative uh, design technology. So, hoping you, are, you can also join us in Digital Creatives. Ed, we are growing fast. Uh, once more, thank you so much sa lahat po ng, ano, ng mga nag-join to those who join Digital Creatives uh, Philippines. Also, we have a lot, a lot of user groups specific for Uh, each Adobe software. So, for example, if it's uh, Photoshop, the naming convention would be Adobe Photoshop User Group uh, Philippines. Ayan. So, shout out na lang muna din. <laughs> shout out na lang din muna din sa mga nag-join ng Adobe uh, Photoshop User Group Philippines. Ayan. It's a good speaker and a lecturer. Yeah, tama ka, Sir Wilbert. Ayan. So, si Sir, nakita nyo naman, no? Si Sir Onel. Uh, tayo, hindi naman tayo na, we are not asking for, di ba, for, for payment for fee. Yan, it's all uh, from the heart and uh, our small way and means 
uh, of serving our country and uh, our countrymen. And yeah, again, hoping pag kayo po ay na-master nyo yan, sana uh, you get to share what you have learned, your knowledge din sa ating uh, community. Oh, na naalala ko to yung tuloy kay Sir Ronel, parang may, may tatlo atang nag-dislike eh. <laughs> na inakala nila ano dapat English daw yung content ayan so ako din pipilitin ko I'll, I'll try as much as I can to as pointing in English daw ayan so once more shout out to uh, our new friends uh, joining us in Adobe Photoshop User Group Philippines uh, Miss Hana May Angela Gigo Aquino Gina Basilisco May Kabage, Angel Angelica Rapsing, Romel Aguilar Sarto. Ayan, shout out again to our uh, friends uh, in pamantasan ng lungsod ng Muntinlupa. Ayan, especially to, to Dean, no? Kay Dean, ayan. Ayan, good evening Miss Angeli Bontigao. Okay, uh, again, no, uh, the naming convention would be Adobe and then uh, the name of the Adobe software. So, uh, if, you're, if you would like to learn more about uh, VFX, motion graphics, uh, inviting everyone to join us in Adobe After Effects User Group Philippines. Ayan, ang mabilis, this is also uh, growing fast. Uh, in addition, may iba ng onte, um, every... Facebook group, we also have an equivalent LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn uh, group for that. So just for uh, example, uh, this time Adobe Premiere Pro User Group Philippines in LinkedIn. So again, if it's uh, Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop User Group Philippines in LinkedIn. Ayan. Also... For those who are interested to learn more about vector graphics, ayan. Okay, uh, inviting everyone to join us in Adobe Illustrator User Group Philippines. Okay, shout out Chastin, Dre, Velenia Sheila, Christina, Princess Alrengdora, Sean, Sean, Gabriel, Froilan, Romero, Crystaline, Pastor, Junior, Kabab, Rizalin de la Cruz, Richard Garcia, Dan Carlos Ocampo, Riga Monteclaro, Ray, Balaba, Manuel, Geldore, Blessing Dyke, Ban Art, yeah, sir. Good evening, Cliff Valente, Cesar Dan Bartolay, Mark Anthony Manuel. Ayan, thank you for joining Adobe Illustrator. Ayan, apologies, Justin, one week ago pa pala. So, stay tuned lang po sa community natin no, sa, in Digital Creatives Philippines and uh, to our friends in Mikani Web for uh, the dates, the future dates of uh, trainings for uh, Illustrator Premiere Pro After Effects Ayan, in design. And uh, lastly, pumalo na tayo. We've reached uh, another milestone. It's 7,000 members for Adobe Educators uh, Philippines. So this group is uh, targeting everyone who would like to, to teach <laughs> to teach an uh, Adobe uh, software. Also, sana, no? sana, sana all. Hoping sana all uh, may wakom din. No? So again, uh, inviting everyone uh, to join us, in, to join our friends in wakom uh, user group Philippines. Ayan, same. Kapareho nyo rin po ako, no? Sana. <laughs> Wishing to have a, a Cintiq 32-inch or 24-inch para to fully utilize Adobe Photoshop. Ayan. So, I'm seeing here oh, the latest uh, price list. Ito pa rin ata, no? Of uh, Wacom uh, pen display and tablet, grabe. Cintiq 24, 153. Sana nga all. <laughs> okay, so edX. edX is a uh, platform uh, by Adobe wherein you get to learn a lot of things, of course, about Adobe. And uh, this is where also we can uh, find and take up Adobe Creative uh, Educator. 
Okay, so I'm I'm gonna be reposting this. Ang output po, no? Maybe some of you are asking if there's an output. Ayan. The output is kung ano yung sinabi sa sa site na to, no? What uh, what the request is by the authors, uh, teachers of uh, Adobe Creative Educator. And once more, after you have finished this, diba, you'll be having a digital badge. Now, that digital badge, uh, you can add that to under, under skills, but under under ano ba? under what? It will be under licenses and certification, guys. Ayan. It will be under licenses and certification. Ano ba yun? Accomplishments, skills. Lata dito talagang you have, you have to browse, scroll down. Ayan, under licenses and uh, certification. Ayan, Adobe Creative Educator yan. Level 1. So, C credential, it will be, it will be redirected to the badge. So me, I have taken this last September 18. Again, this is level 2 but samahan nyo na rin po ako. Let's finish this uh, once and for all. Okay? For us to move on and uh, to learn something new again. no? So once more, this is under uh, cred, Acclaim, Credly. Yeah, last time Credly was acquired. Ay, Acclaim was acquired by Credly. So here are some of uh, matagal na, no? Actually, some are already expired, mga digital uh, badges. Also, so if you're, if you would like, if you would like to take up the challenge of Adobe uh, certification exams, ayan, meron din po. Uh, ayan, and you can also head to edX to learn more on how to pass this exam. So, again, it's edX, adobe.com, adobe dash, adobe dash, Creative uh, dash educator, okay. Hmm. Let me share to you something. Ayan. So today we'll be tackling level two. Again, ako po uh, I'm very late for this one. A lot of uh, our friends have already finished this, and uh, like you, I guess uh, the reason is na sobrang <laughs> na sobrang busy. Ayan. Okay. So, what are we going to learn today? After taking this course, you will understand. Ayan. These are some of the things that we are uh, going to learn. Uh, instructional design. Ayan. Which is very important. Ayan. On how we can infuse that uh, creativity into any course. How to write down and plan for creative learning outcomes. Ayan. Learning outcomes for your course. How to scaffold and sequence creativity into your course. Ayan. So, how to provide peer and teacher feedback. Of course, syempre, napakahalaga ng feedback. Actually, uh, just to share, uh, recently, I took up uh, TESDA, Trainers Methodology. And uh, the, the course outline uh, we're seeing here, the objectives, objectives we're seeing here are, reminds me, uh, so much of uh, TESDA's uh, trainer's uh, methodology. So shout out to my to our uh, instructor for TM1, Sir uh, Glenn Agda. If he's <laughs> if he's listening right now, or he has uh, info that we have a uh, a channel. Okay. So next, how to personalize and differentiate. Creative outcomes for all students. Importance of fostering a diverse and inclusive learning environment. So again, no, uh, it's uh, teaching. And guys, diba, um, if, you, if you would like to learn something, again, if you would like to learn uh, something, diba, ituro mo yan. Diba? You'll be lear the, the learning curve. You'll be learning that thing faster than being the, the student. Ayan. And you'll have, you will be having the respect and recognition. Ayan, ikaw, nag ikaw nagturo, no? Ayan. So, get next. How to plan creatively throughout online or distance learning? Yes, because it's COVID time pa rin, no? Everything is done online. How to encourage sharing and communication of creative learning 
And lastly, how to choose the right Adobe tools ayan, to help students express uh, their creativity. Okay. So next, uh, itong course pa na to, level 2. Uh, ayan, no? It started September 28. Matagal na nga. September, October, November, December. Ayan. Okay, and this one will, uh, the course... Uh, this training, this online course will be retired on September 30, 2021. So it's tagged here as a beginner course, 6 hours. Of course, hindi tayo habot ng 6, <laughs> six hours tonight. Don't worry po. No? We'll uh, speed this up. Pipilitin po natin as much as we can to finish this once and for all. Okay, so currently as of uh, yesterday, it has 2,000... Uh, 215 so guys if you have uh, an internet connection of course and uh, a laptop suggesting sabayan uh, to join me let's uh, do this even if you're not into uh, level 2 but to level 1 ayan okay so paano po mag register yes there's there's uh, just to answer uh, John Stephen will Waiko Waiko May certificate? Yes, there is, uh, but it will not be coming from uh, from us, no, from from me, from us. Uh, this one will be coming from Adobe itself, guys. Kaya napakaganda. Ayan, the, and you'll be having I don't know. After you finish this one, Adobe will be sending a, a digital badge. So. Take note of this URL that I am currently highlighting. Specific po yan sa akin lang. So, yan yung uh, e-certificate uh, ko. Ayan. And you'll be having this as well. So, sabayan, sabayan nyo ako today. Feel free to ask uh, questions. Ayan. Okay, this is a very uh, great uh, addition, credential, in which you can also add this into your uh, LinkedIn profile. Ayan, me. Same like me, under license and certification. So, for uh, Zachary Byron Potato, ayan, paano mag-register? Uh, okay, I'm gonna be pasting again the, the link uh, for edX. Okay, the request is the challenge for tonight is you'll be, we will all be doing this. So, I'm hoping you're not, I don't know, you'll not be... Uh, watching me but you'll be joining me as we uh, finish this up level one and uh level one for sa mga not yet ano no uh have not yet na nakapagtake ng level one and uh sa mga level level two then ayan so the registration zachary is we'll be having a raffle draw uh before we end the live stream so that's the only intent for the registration Okay, the registration is for the raffle draw. Ayan. Tonight. Okay. Ayan. So again, six hours. Let's uh, try to finish this within uh, within uh, one hour. Okay. So I'm now in again the the website of uh, Adobe edX okay so kung hindi, once more if you're not yet the done with level one here's level one under the same uh, link uh, page I feel free to enter in uh, level one uh, but uh, for us today ayan, uh, I'll be ayan, I'll be going And I'll be going now to level uh, level two. So again, for level two, we have, ayan, we have two badges. So may it be a higher education uh, faculty or if if you're a K twelve. Now, guys, if you're only students, any of the two will do. Walang kaso, di ba? Ang ganda pang ano no? You're, di ba? And you can be a sort of a, a trainer, a faculty, a, not, not necessarily a, a trainer, no? Okay, so this can be a great addition, guys, to your uh, resumes. Ayan. Okay? 
Yeah, and we're hoping na again, no, our community encourages everyone to be an instructor, to be a trainer, di ba? So ako, for me, mini, 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 mo, <laughs> I'll be selecting higher education na lang uh, for now. Ayan. So shout out then pala no, to my classmates in uh, masters in IT. Ayan po. Mahilig po ako mag-aral. Ayan. I'm currently taking uh, MS uh, IT. At uh, ayan, uh, the reason na na-late din ako dito, it's uh, taking up MS IT uh, ayan, consumes a lot of uh, my time. Ayan. But of course, we're hoping for the best. Clicking now, ano, uh, higher education faculty. Pero, ayan. So, Once more, this uh, course is absolutely, absolutely free. Okay, so design your creative course. Ayan, so this course, ayan, was made possible by this uh, group of uh, people. Ayan, I'm seeing here Dominic Trailer, Courtney Miller, ayan, Tanya Avrith. Okay, ayan. So this was uh, carefully created, no, by a lot of people, ayan, to bring in creativity into the classroom. Okay, so once more, it's uh, free for um, uh, all members. Granted that you have registered, no, signed up, pala, signed up. Okay, signed up in uh, edX. Ayan. It's Is it okay if I will register tomorrow? Pwede naman uh, sa edX, no? Pero if you would like to be qualified to our raffle draw tonight, register sa link below video description ata ng YouTube uh, ng YouTube video. Bo, kailan po muna i-take yung level 1? Yes, kailan i-take yung level 1? Nandito lang ako, gawin natin mabilisan. Parang uh, speed ano, speed challenge. Okay, so last time, if you'll be checking uh, the videos of uh, Mikani Web, I uh, I demonstrated how we can quickly, quickly, ano, no, finish up or complete level one. Ayan. Okay, so hoping to finish this, and uh, if not, pede, tatapos talaga natin dapat. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to select enroll now. Ayan, six hours. Uh, we'll try to chop this off uh, within an hour, okay? Design your creative uh, course. Ano pa ba yan? So it has only one section, no? Kinabahan din ako. I thought this has many sections. Okay, so I'm going to uh, click on section one. Ayan, the importance, the importance of designing a creative course. Ayan, so I'm seeing at the bottom we have uh, the status, the status bar. So we're now zero. Welcome to design your creative course. Uh, the importance of creative course, what's in this course. Let's try to play this uh, video. Creativity is becoming more important in higher education courses, and for good reason. Because in today's fast-changing world, creativity is the catalyst for so many things. Self-expression as well as innovation, collaboration, critical thinking, communication, and problem solving. Because of its importance, teachers are learning to integrate creativity into their courses and learning outcomes in new and exciting ways. Research shows that when instructional design asks students to approach a project or problem with a creative mindset, students become more engaged in a subject, feel more motivated to learn, and ultimately enjoy academic and emotional success in long-lasting ways. In this course, we'll build upon that research and insights from creative educators just like you so that you can plan for creativity in your course, whether it be humanities, arts, social sciences, STEM, or any discipline. 
We start by acknowledging that creativity isn't an elusive or charismatic ability accessible only to a select few. Research also shows that all students can be taught to take risks and generate new ideas. The trouble is, instructors don't always plan for creativity in their classroom. Elaine Starko, famed creativity educator, notes, the processes of creativity are inextricably tied to those of learning and motivation. Classrooms organized to develop creativity become places of both learning and wonder, the curious delight. In this course, we will walk you through simple, actionable steps you can take to ensure your learning environment is a creative one, where all students can succeed and apply new knowledge in creative and deep, long-lasting ways. Drawing on proven models for intentional instructional design, coupled with Adobe's unique approach to creativity and education, will make embedding rigorous creative instruction in any course possible. From creating a great learning outcome, to sequencing, spiraling, inclusive design assessment, and feedback, we've got you covered on all the core components and tools to start designing your creative course today. We know that great instruction doesn't just happen, it's thoughtfully planned. Are you ready to infuse creativity into your course? The right mix of creativity and curriculum helps develop innovative students. It encourages them to learn new things and they in turn become more effective communicators. This creative expression helps develop their emotional and their social skills. I think the most exciting thing about designing for a creative classroom is that you're literally putting creativity front and center. You get to inspire students to be innovative, to take risks, and really to play, which is something that's so crucial for students these days in the 21st century. Designing for a creative classroom to me is putting the building blocks in place uh, and to stir up, to challenge creativity, to allow students to have their imagination provoked. And I'm very much a stir and nudge type of educator. I love to nudge the students and stir them into thinking for themselves and becoming creative so that the outcome is varied, it's different. A creative classroom is really one where everybody's individuality is honored, everyone's narrative is honored, and there's space for everyone to be themselves. The most rewarding thing in designing a creative classroom is really seeing the outcomes. The learning outcomes are really where this shines the most. Um, I think that when a student feels like they cannot be creative when they enter the classroom and they feel like they actually can be creative when they leave the classroom, regardless of discipline, you have really brought a new level of confidence to that student and they will be able to take risks in the future um, that will be beneficial to their development, not only in higher education, but their development professionally once they are in their careers. Creativity, it is an essential skill that we are seeing industry professionals really wanting young professionals to have and um, bringing forth new ideas, new perspectives, and that really helps in terms of bringing forth an evolution and advancement in the field. And so I think it's really important to emphasize that in our classes moving forward. For me, the most rewarding part of um, designing and working within a creative environment is actually seeing that spark of light when students actually solve a problem, when they've been wrestling with it for weeks maybe, and they come up with that solution and ultimately make it happen. The most rewarding thing about designing for a creative classroom is knowing that by putting in a little more thought into instructional design, I'm ensuring that students get more than content knowledge or disciplinary skills, but that they're also cultivating those essential skills like creativity, communication, and collaboration. Because unfortunately, those aren't often baked into traditional standards, curriculum, or learning outcomes. So we as educators have the opportunity to make sure that those don't get overlooked. Ayan. Okay, so once in this course, ayan, we have uh, seen an overview. Okay, the importance of designing a creativity. Okay, so moving forward, upon completion of the assignment, again, guys, this has an assignment that we are, uh, we will be given a task here in order for us to finally get a hold of that uh, badge. So as I scroll down, I'm seeing here the next uh, button, clicking on this. 
Okay, scrolling up. So how does creativity relate to other uh, skills? So they're uh, showing us here a uh, course, uh, inspiration. See, I'm seeing here uh, science, infographics. Ayan. Again, using an Adobe uh, tool. Ayan. Shout out to Cloud Claudio, Ayan. Educator Insights. Okay, let's uh, view this uh, YouTube video. There are numerous approaches to instructional design for integrating creativity into your course. In this lesson, we'll introduce you to a few different popular models and show you how they allow for injecting creativity throughout the planning process. Let's start with the importance of backwards design. Backwards design means starting with learning outcomes and designing backwards to individual activities, lessons, or content where students can demonstrate their knowledge. This principle is at the heart of approaches like understanding by design, Addy, which sequence the instructional design and learning process with the end result in mind, and universal design for learning, which encourages instructors to start with the why of learning first through the lens of representation, engagement, and expression. All of these frameworks have a few things in common. They are adaptable to creative teaching across all subjects and grade levels. They encourage teachers to plan instruction with the end in mind, some more explicitly and others more iteratively. Most importantly for this course, they allow you to name creativity and creative thinking as an end goal and create a framework to then infuse creativity into every step of the planning process. We encourage you to spend some more time with these three models or to use your current model for instructional design and ask yourself, where in my planning process can I make creativity more explicit? How can I design for it in each element of my course, from the learning outcomes to the assignments or activities, and in areas like social and emotional learning, inclusivity, and distance learning? Putting creativity at the forefront of every stage of the planning process means that creativity will become an integral part of student learning and also part of your process. In the words of creativity scholar Mitchell Resnick, think of the planning process as tinkering. Tinkerers understand how to improvise, adapt, and iterate as new situations arise. Tinkering breeds creativity. Start small, try out simple ideas, react to what happens, make adjustments, and refine your plans. Let's hear from educators like you about how their instructional design process or their tinkering created aha moments in their courses. Teachers play a central role in developing creative thinkers. It helps me as an educator to be able to reach students at different levels. It helps me to develop a curriculum that encourages students to look at different ways to answer a variety of challenges. I typically use Understanding by Design and Addy as my instructional frameworks, although I'm also familiar with UDL. Um, and so, but most typically I use Understanding by Design, UBD, where I plan with the end in mind. What I love about this is that I always have an end goal in mind where I want students to really be by the end of my course, if it's in higher education. This helps me infuse creativity at every single step of the way because I know where I want my students to land. I know how to plan creativity as milestone markers along the way to get them to that final goal. I design my courses and my classes to be very experiential. I believe that working in teams and having to experience what a project is going to be like, not only in the sense of what the learning outcome of that project is, but also the communication and the collaboration that happens around that experiential learning, the ability for you to have reflective time, uh, the ability for students to fail fast. This is all very important design aspects in my creative classroom not simply enough to have one student succeed, but every single student must succeed in their own way. So I plan with the end in mind, but I also ensure that there are multiple routes to success. As an educator, I use both the understanding by design as well as the universal design for learning framework. And what those frameworks enable me to do, especially when I use UDL, is to consider whether or not my lesson is accessible to all learners Okay, let's uh, move forward. You can view it. Uh, huh. 
Let's check out this uh, course inspiration. Ayan. Okay, so uh, it brought me to an additional uh, learning. Pero of course, no need naman to immediately take up this uh, that course. No? It's just for reference. Okay, so quickly as that, let's scroll down and hit the next button. Okay, we're now at 15%. Okay. Ayan, so what makes a creative uh, learning outcome? Ayan, of course, with every, diba, with every course, diba, the, the objectives should always uh, be, ayan, be defined. Okay, so course inspiration, there's another uh, sample here. Okay, and uh, once more, let's play the video. Think of a student learning outcome like the final destination of a journey. Taking a road trip without that final destination in mind can be exciting and adventurous. But it's our job as educators to ensure that students reach their final destination having mastered the content, skills, and literacies that matter the most for their future. This principle is at the heart of backwards design. First, create clear, specific learning outcomes for your students. Then design the activities, assignments, or assessments best suited for reaching those learning outcomes. Creativity, like communication or critical thinking, can be a learning outcome on its own, or it can complement or support existing learning outcomes or standards. If your curriculum or course is a prerequisite, prescription, or anchored in higher education standards, first identify where creativity will be essential to student success. Even if creativity isn't explicitly named, it can be simple to find the places where creativity best supports your standards or course. Look for these telltale signs of creativity. Do you have learning outcomes that ask students to use inquiry to use different kinds of questions? Do open-ended or complex tasks? Create novel ideas and hypotheses? Represent knowledge in new ways? Use the following verbs to help you plan for creativity. Now you have creative learning outcomes. Here are some examples of creativity in action in learning objectives. See how this language and literature objective highlights creativity? Notice how this math objective depends on student creative thinking? And this history or civics objective has creativity and the creative process at its core? If you don't already have creativity in an existing learning outcome, see how simple it can be to add those elements at the beginning of your instructional planning? Examples like these help your instructional design and your outcome because they're also smart or specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. Taking the time to ensure you have a creative and smart learning objective at the outset of your planning makes it easier to create aligned activities, learning experiences, and assessments to help your students reach their end goals with mastery, confidence, and creativity. Let's hear from educators that have made creativity a core part of their students' learning objectives. Learning objectives need to be concise and it's very important that they clearly articulate expectations. So for example, when I was teaching at USC Annenberg, I was teaching creativity and design to a lot of communication students. And when they would see a creative project, there was a lot of anxiety there. So it was very important for me to make them aware that I was looking more at intentions and their critical thinking skills, less on how great they can use Photoshop and more on what were you trying to create with Photoshop? And did you see that idea through? As a creative educator, I love to engage my students in new and different ways. I want to encourage innovation when they're solving problems. I want them to be original, to take risks. Don't be afraid to fail. Have fun in the process of learning. What makes a good learning objective in general is something that is tied to not only strong pedagogy principles, but also has an application into the real world. Having that connection, that bridge between what we're emphasizing in academia and what's being done in the practice is so crucial. The objective is not just to get students across a particular finish line, to get them to acquire a skill, a skill or know something specific or to be able to uh, perform a particular way, but actually that um, it be something that students can fit into their own lives and their own desires, right? That they can take it and make it their own and that the, the objective itself is flexible enough for them to do so. 
uh, such that any student can, can fulfill that learning objective, um, no matter of how interested they think they are in the particular topic or area. Another key uh, aspect of learning objectives that goes along with flexibility is designing something that's within reach, um, something that's sort of small scale and is not, again, about, um, about sort of mastery, but is, a, is about um, uh, exploration and forward motion and iteration. Ayan, okay. So next. Moving down. Okay, I'm going to click the next button. Moving uh, forward to sequencing and the scaffolding uh, creativity. So once more, shout out din pala no, to our uh, friends who are in the world of architecture, engineering, and construction. Naalala ko kayo because I heard about, ano, no? I am seeing here scaffolding. Ayan, sequencing and scaffolding creativity. Okay, let's watch the video once more. We are now at 23%. If you've planned your instructional design with the end goal in mind by creating clear, specific learning outcomes for your students, the logical next step is to support student learning by creating staggered milestones and pathways to help them reach those outcomes, content, activities, or assignments that lead to student success. Before you begin, it's helpful to ask yourself questions like, how and when will I build on prior knowledge or skills? Should this be a standalone activity or a five-part project? Ultimately, the question for a creative educator is, how will sequencing or scaffolding help my students to reach their full potential? Here is an example of an effective sequence or scaffolded learning project where students create their own podcast using Adobe Audition. The series of activities walks students through four stages of a scaffolded project, each intentionally designed to grow in complexity, provide time for feedback and self-reflection, and build on previous work. First, students analyze the credibility of a podcast. Next, Students carefully analyze the rhetorical moves that authors make in a podcast by drawing on learnings from the previous activity. In the last two steps, students prepare to create, script, and interview for their own podcast, building on what they've learned. By the end of the unit, students have developed the skills and components they need to create their own unique podcast, including brainstorming, iterating, giving and receiving feedback, and trying new approaches. Let's hear how creative educators sequence or scaffold learning and creative work in their courses. When I teach creativity, I make sure that it's a routine part of the instruction and not an add-on or a special activity here or there. Because when it's a regular practice like other skills, then you start to think about how to build on it and scaffold in complexity and spiral and return to things. You get to say to your students, Remember when we did that rapid brainstorm last week? Well, this week we're going to do that same thing, but then add on to it a design thinking activity to break those ideas into themes or categories. Or you can say this time, rather than an independent brainstorm, you're going to generate ideas collaboratively in a small group. Identify the large goals early so that students have a sense and a kind of buy in to what the big picture goals are and a sense of where they're headed to. Um, then uh, the best sort of thing that you can do again early on in the course is to make really small chunks, simply to demonstrate facility with a tool or with a concept to demonstrate um, interest or to sort of identify an interest even. So making things that are really, really achievable early on, like build a sense of confidence in students. And, and, and then finally, um, as you get towards the end of the course or the project to to sort of throw open the doors and give students a lot of options. As far as scaffolding and chunking skills and competencies, I start by beginning with the end in mind, looking at the skills and competencies and concepts students need to know and students need to be able to apply, analyze, synthesize, evaluate, and in turn use that knowledge to create something new according to a performance-based task. In a creative classroom, that would be the same. It's all about moving students through the levels of Bloom's taxonomy from knowledge through creation and understanding that they come to us with 
certain intelligences, ways of learning, visual, kinesthetic, auditory, verbal, linguistic, and that we need to build on those and provide ways for students to use technology to enhance how they communicate their learning. And okay, so finally we uh, learned what uh, scaffolding is. So just recently, okay, I got a confirmation email. So if you have uh, registered, okay, or enrolled to the courses level one and level two, uh, you'll be uh, receiving uh, this uh, notification or an email. You'll be receiving uh, this email confirming that you are uh, currently in enrolled and in the program. Okay, so uh, our first uh, giveaway, <laughs> first giveaway this evening, ayan. first prize ayan, goes to the first person, okay, na mag-chat-chat -chat ng hashtag ado be edu creative ayan hashtag adobe edu creative first person okay to uh, comment down or chat down hashtag adobe edu creative in okay in twitch okay gets to have three months uh a link in learning and career premium subscription. Okay, that subscription po three months is valued at ninety dollars. So four or five din yun, di ba? Malasana, makatulong yun, no? Okay, in Twitch po, ah. Adobe Edu Creative in Twitch, and uh, you should, uh, of course, syempre naman, you should follow uh, our friends in digital creatives. Philippines. Ayan. Comment down lang. Ayan. Yung Twitch. I'm showing you Twitch right now. Ayan. Twitchy. Okay. Comment down. Hashtag Adobe Edu Creative. Sayang po yan. 4 or 5 din yan. $90 with 3 months. Sobrang dami nyo pong matututunan. Okay. Okay. Moving forward. Let's now check out uh, formative uh, peer feedback. So I'm going to click next. Next. Okay. We're now at 30%. So formative uh, peer uh, feedback, of course. You, you, you will always level up. Okay. By hearing the, the feedback of, ano, no, of someone. Napakahalaga niyan. Okay, and it makes uh, us down to earth, no? Be, be in earth, no? Okay, that's how important feedback is. Not only about learning, pero of course, ourselves then, no? We may be hearing ourselves, pero uh, you'll never know. Yung tingin pala sa atin ng ibang tao, di ba? So, the feedback is not only applicable into learning, but of course, I'm just sharing to you guys na it should also be applied to ourselves. So, the winner pala, no? The winner for our uh, first uh, giveaway is Robster the Gigabyte. Okay. Robster the Gigabyte, uh, to claim your uh, prize, you may claim your prize by ano, uh, connecting with me in LinkedIn. Just PM me in LinkedIn. Okay? So, Quickly, let's uh, get back to the action. Let's watch what formative uh, peer feedback is. Formative feedback is a powerful way to give students confidence and guidance by showing them what's working and what they might want to adapt in the future. It can come from many sources, including an instructor, from peers, or through student self-reflection. Studies have shown that students are more successful when they feel safe and supported, they're comfortable asking for help or inspiration from peers, they're given peer feedback during the creative process that is open-ended and reflective, and they receive confidence-building praise about progress and small wins. These types of peer-to-peer -peer interactions double your creative learning gains by building bonds of community and trust. 
and helping to establish a safe learning environment where collaboration and risk-taking are encouraged. Here are some examples of activities and prompts for formative peer feedback in the creative process. Students highlight what is working well and what their peer can focus on in the next stage of their creative process. Students point out what's working, roses, areas of potential, buds, and what is getting in the way, thorns. You could use the tag feedback method, tell the creator something you like, ask the creator a question, give the creator a suggestion, or offer students sentence starters to ensure their feedback focuses on the creative process. For example, try the, instead of this, try this prompts format. Think about the projects or activities you have planned to address your course learning outcomes. Then ask yourself, when and how often will students benefit from peer feedback? This will help you plan backwards so that your students get the peer feedback they need. Let's hear from educators like you who structure peer formative feedback in their creative courses. Formative and peer feedback is so important in that creative process. The ability to be able to bounce your ideas and your thoughts off a peer, off somebody else, and hear what they're thinking, have them feedback to you. It really does uh, help to uh, formulate something even greater than the idea itself. There is no original idea. There's only things that other people have thought of already and then we kind of make an iteration based on that. Just creating that safe space where it's okay to disagree with somebody else and actually present another idea and it always, always results in a better final outcome. Formative peer feedback influences everything that we do. Much like having a discussion at the dinner table about politics or an idea or a problem with your family or friends, formative peer feedback really helps students to talk about and socially construct knowledge and really build knowledge together, making their creative projects even more expansive, even more collaborative, even more constructed with the help of others. I provide students with opportunities to learn from each other and provide critical and constructive feedback. In my experience, this is part of what they will need to do for the rest of their lives. And when they learn how to provide and receive critical constructive feedback or formative assessments from their peers, they will do better because they will have an understanding of how to take and receive but also provide that feedback to others. I believe that peer feedback is an essential part of any classroom. People work together. People work together in teams. When you are out of the classroom as a student and you're in your professional space, regardless, regardless of your discipline, you are going to have to communicate and collaborate with other people. And the ability for you to be able to get feedback and have a better understanding and a better opportunity to be able to take feedback, positive and negative, and be able to constructively use that feedback to better yourself, the sooner you can get those kinds of tools and processes under your belt, the better you're going to be in the long run. Creativity is important for all because it helps you become a better problem solver and a critical thinker, which are skills that translate beyond the classroom. Ayan. Okay, so that's uh, what formative uh, peer uh, feedback is. And uh, shout out to Robster, the Gigabyte. Ayan, congratulations. Ayan, for winning three months LinkedIn Career Premium uh, and Learning Subscription. Moving forward. Okay, let's uh, know what uh, giving summative uh, feedback is. Ayan. So we'll be learning some strategies and approach and giving uh, feedback, okay, to our uh, students. When your students have finished their creative activities or projects, it's time to plan how you'll provide them with meaningful summative feedback. Summative feedback is so much more than just grading final assignments. If done thoughtfully, it ensures students fully understand what worked well and what they might improve on in future creative endeavors. Unlike formative feedback, which is given during the creative process, summative feedback is holistic and retrospective, an opportunity to comment on a student's complete creative journey. It can highlight how students responded to earlier formative feedback, 
show them the importance of and relationship between the creative process and the final product, and simultaneously assess content knowledge and the development of higher order thinking and skills, like the four C's. Rubrics are often the tool of choice for educators delivering summative feedback. They help communicate clear expectations and give specific feedback. Here's an example of a rubric where the success criteria for creative skills is specifically called out for students. This is an example of a single point rubric, but you could break it into columns to give students examples of what lower or higher levels of mastery look like. You can also adapt rubrics like this to call out areas for improvement and strength in each creative skill. Other organizations and teachers have developed their own rubrics. You might want to explore them further. There are also teaching resources on the Adobe Education Exchange. These include awesome creative rubrics that align to the outcomes or objectives of the project or activity. Now let's hear from educators who have had success with summative feedback. I give feedback or assess creativity much like I give feedback and assess anything, a final project. I try to build on students' strengths so that they can carry those strengths forward through everything that they do. Well, even though it's a final project, I still can give them areas to think about polish or improvement so that they can also carry that feedback forward. I assess creativity after a project is done by really looking to see, did that student exceed the expectations of the project? Did they really not only take the, uh, you know, the ask and deliver the ask, but did they deliver it in a way that might be unique or might be different in a way that their colleagues did. And another really important part of that is really showing the students what their colleagues did so that they really can compare and they can get ideas and share ideas and see how people took maybe the same exact mission but did something a little differently. There was one particular case where the student was really struggling with a solution for a mobile phone app. And through critique and through personal support and reinforcement. The student not only got an A grade, but also went on to win several awards at the American Advertising Federation student competition. Okay. Sana sumasabay kayo, no? So that's how <laughs> quick things are. Ayan. Shout out to Mary Jean Ugbaniel. Good evening to you. And I uh, hope you can invite others as well to join us. Okay, so that's uh, summative uh, feedback is, okay, so let's uh, move down, hit next, and uh, head over to enhancing student uh, choice. So once more in this uh, video, we will uh, learn how to personalize and differentiate uh, creative education. Of course, uh, we have a lot of ano, diba? different uh, students. Ayan. Okay. Everyone is different, and learners are no exception. When you personalize your instruction to create options, you allow your students' differences to shine. While collectively your students are all on the same creative learning journey in your course, as the instructor, you have the opportunity to ensure that all students can be successful. Personalized learning looks and feels flexible and authentic for all students. It encourages student choice and independent thinking. It's responsive to students' learning needs, lives, and identities. And it allows multiple avenues to student success. This is the case with all forms of learning, but it's even more important in a creative course. In each stage of your instruction design, Consider the following things. What students learn, where they learn and demonstrate learning, how they come to learn, how they demonstrate learning, and how they can revisit and bolster knowledge or skills. Designing for differentiation doesn't need to be hard. It just needs to be purposeful. Imagine a final essay about using suspense in a literature class. You can boost personalization by encouraging students to choose from a long list of texts. You can create materials and spaces for students to learn content, knowledge, or skills inside or outside of class and share their final projects with a live presentation or as a digital gallery submission. If an instructor sees their students getting stuck learning to interview each other in class, they might let students go off campus and interview family, friends, 
or community members outside of class. You can give students opportunities to collaborate or work on their own, use video or audio, or have extra time. These options create lots of ways for different learners to reach their destination. Let's hear from some educators who've developed similar techniques to differentiate and personalize instruction in their creative classrooms. When it comes to creativity, I think allowing students to make choices about what tools they use and how they use their voice and how they tell their story is crucial. It gives them a playground, it encourages them to take risks, and quite frankly, it helps them learn how to fail up. In my teaching, I don't feel that it's so much that I allow for or encourage personal choice um, as that I mandate it, that I'm, um, I'm not setting out to teach a course that has a definite endpoint, but, but is uh, instead a kind of intersection of all of the varying interests and, and tastes and choices that students in the class and will make in context with the materials that I've chosen. When you are helping students be creative in a classroom, you still want to make sure that all of their individual needs are being met. And you can do this by taking a look at the process and identifying moments that you know a differentiated support would really help that individual student. When it comes to creative activities, I always think of graphic organizers, outlines, mind maps, brainstorming, and collaborative partners as an important part of that process. I strive to create environments where there are plenty of options, no matter how students like to learn. For example, when I was the director of digital learning initiatives at USC Annenberg, for the students that were very hands-on, we had a makerspace. For students that were visual learners, there was a plethora of online tutorials and for those students that really want to learn one-on-one, -on -one, my door is always open. So being really clear and consistent with my communication, being very organized, uh, making sure that all of my materials are in one place where students can get to it, that they are visually appealing and so on and so forth. So there's no kind of lost, uh, lost information or added cognitive load to communicating. The second piece of that is asking them to communicate with me kind of a lot. Um, making sure that I'm available to them and that I, I want to hear from letting them know that I want to hear from them when stuff is going well, when stuff is not going well, when they have a question, um, if they if they just want to stop by and chat, that, that my door is kind of open to them. In a creative environment, you might give students choice on topics that they explore, and you might also give them choices on how they share what it is that they've learned, whether they use audio or video or text images, they design something new and or they curate resources from a variety of places, they can get creative in a lot of different ways. Okay, ayan. So moving forward, mamaya na onte, we will be uh, having another ano, no, uh, uh, giveaway. Ayan. So before that, let's uh, check out how to Foster diversity and inclusion. So once again, uh, to those who are new uh, in our live stream, shout out to Sheila May S. Angos, Marks, Mark Lester, Batikura Aileen Tungal, ayan, Mary May Gabatan, Hannah May Handumon, Cherry May Handumon, Cherry May Handumon. Okay, so guys, kung nandito kayo ngayon at nandito pa rin mamaya, ayan, we'll be uh, giving away, ayan, uh, link in learning and career premium subscription to our, <laughs> to all who has, uh, who are currently joining us, ayan, up to the end, of course, ayan, let's uh, watch Foster and Diversity and Inclusion. Your students bring a wealth of experiences, identities, cultures, and ways of being to your course. Your instructional decisions can have a powerful impact on this diversity in your community of learners. It's why creating a culture of self-expression and inclusivity is paramount. Consider the phrase, what I see can be me. If students see themselves reflected in what they're learning, they're more likely to be engaged and imagine themselves capable of mastering the subject matter. To support multiple perspectives in your creative course, Ask yourself, who are the creators of the course materials your students are engaging with? 
Does that content provide opportunities for students to see themselves and experience a broad range of perspectives? What groups or experiences are represented in your content? Are all individuals represented equally? The ability to share your point of view is at the heart of creative self-expression. If you've developed trust in your classroom dialogue, discussion, and community, in the words of Zaretta Hammond, trust frees up the brain for other activities such as creativity, learning, and higher order thinking. To build that sense of trust and safety in your course, create opportunities or expectations for students to reflect on their identity and experiences. Connect that to their learning. Amplify their voice and confidence. Let's hear from creative educators to learn what diversity and inclusion mean to them. Diversity and inclusion means equal access to the curriculum, equal access to viewpoints, equal access and voices when it comes to um, that whole creative process, the way things should be done. Um, it shouldn't be that um, a person's viewpoints are hindered in any way, shape or form based on any of the subjective biases that we have in society. We should all be able in an educational setting, in any setting actually, to be able to actually voice what it is that we feel and our voice be a valid contributor towards that final outcome. Again, it comes back to that whole idea of having a safe space to voice your opinion, share ideas with your peers without feeling as if your voice won't be heard. When students see themselves, their identities and their experiences in the classroom, their learning materials, or in the projects and examples they get to create, it's powerful. They see that people like them can be creative, have a valuable voice and express their unique perspectives, and the value that that diversity of thought and idea brings. It's so important to let students know that every part of them, their lives and their backgrounds are relevant to what they're learning and that they can bring all of that to their learning and self-expression. Providing a classroom that is welcoming and meets the needs of students from all over the world with different, different abilities, different cultural backgrounds, different strengths, different items for improvement, and it just makes the educational experience more rich because we're able to learn about one another. To me, diversity and inclusion mean that every educator and student in the classroom, in the building, has a voice and should have an opportunity to share that voice. I have a great success story related to diversity and inclusion in the classroom. It came from my capstone campaigns class, where advertising students work with a, uh, a live client and they compete in order to win what we call the Blue Cow Award. This particular class was working with the city of San Jose in order to raise awareness about illegal dumping and solutions to that specific problem. And the winning team actually created a trilingual campaign where their visuals were accompanied by copy written in Vietnamese, in Spanish and in English. And this was um, created from, again, a multicultural, diverse team of students from the advertising program. I remember teaching a course at Stanford, a version of which that I had taught previously for high school students that was a combination of literature and philosophy. And at one point, an undergrad student came to me really upset and said, I'm not reading Plato. I don't agree with his ideas and I don't see myself and what I believe in him or his ancient context. Now, this student was really good at critique. And so I challenged her and said, transform that critique into creation. Take that reading that you disagree with and transform it. Change the words, change the tone, and engage with his ideas, which was the point of the assignment, but do so by creating something that you'd like to see in the world instead. And I love assignments like that, that move students from those more passive forms of critique to active creation and genuinely invite them to bring their own diversity and experiences to the subject matter. Okay, moving forward. Ayan. Uh, let's discover naman distance uh, learning. Ayan, shout out, Joan Handumon. Ayan, once more to qualify for our raffle giveaway, 
simply uh, register. I think the link is in the video description. Ayan. Learning that happens outside the classroom can take many forms. When done in tandem with in-class learning, we know it is flipped, blended, or hybrid learning. If there is no physical classroom, we call it online, remote, or distance learning. Teaching fully or partially outside a traditional in-person classroom feels different. But with intentional instructional design, you can amplify creative opportunities and alleviate challenges students face. Adobe has been learning from the best practices of educators to understand the design principles that help them and their students be successful in different scenarios. We've distilled them down to the following principles. We've seen success with smaller, simpler steps and examples for students to build up small wins that build to complex skills and thinking. Timing looks different when students are learning asynchronously, so giving students the freedom to work at their own pace while keeping a commitment to hitting shared milestones respects their individual circumstances. Providing extra resources like links, supplementary materials, and tutorials support students when they need immediate help. And online forums, video conferencing, and other interactive technologies keep students connected through activities like Think, Pair, Share. Let's hear from educators who have adapted curricula to keep creativity at the forefront of distance learning. Creativity and collaboration aren't restricted to four walls, so you can still continue those through distance learning. For example, you can use cloud tools to work on projects synchronously and asynchronously. You can also communicate via web tools through mobile devices as well. When I think about how creativity can work with distance learning, I actually wonder how could you do distance learning without being creative? Because we're constantly coming up with new and innovative approaches to using this new technology, which asks us to rethink what discussion, debate, or collaboration looks like in this new normal. Students have often more independent or unstructured time with distance learning, which can be really well suited to the kinds of creative projects or activities that really thrive with that level of flexibility, or which can be challenging in a traditional, tightly structured or whole class school day. But this also means giving students more resources. They often need more videos or multimedia so that they can do more independent learning of the content or the tools. With those more flexible times, students often need more or different modalities of feedback to ensure that they're reaching those goals through independent or more uh, self-structured learning. Creativity and collaboration can totally be taught in a virtual uh, distance learning space. Why? Because that's what we do so much in the professional space outside of higher ed. Companies all across the globe are working with teams remotely all over. And having students work collaboratively and creatively on team assignments where they have to work in a virtual space and do project management and do different kinds of things and, and really connect with different file sharing opportunities and, and to bring those aspects of virtual work into distance learning will only benefit them in the long run. Just remember, first and foremost, um, everyone's in the same boat. You know, we're all learning together in this new norm of distance learning. So I think it's totally possible to teach creativity and collaboration uh, in distance learning. Uh, the two things that immediately jump out to me are thinking about multimodal classes, right? Classes that have the ability to be done in a variety of ways that offer students a whole bunch of different entry points. Uh, another way that this can be done is to be used is to use collaborative tools to ask students to work together online to write, comment, annotate, revise, draft different pieces of writing. Um, this can be done asynchronously, so it's really open-ended as far as how students collaborate with one another. So my number one piece of advice for any educator out there that's worried or sees that distance learning is, is a daunting task 
is to connect. Connect with others. Grow your personal learning network, professional learning network, whichever way you want to say it. Connect with others through social media. There's so much you can gain. You can share ideas. You can bounce ideas off one another. And there's so many resources out there that others are willing to share freely. Yeah. So my thoughts with regards to uh, distance learning, actually, uh, it made me more uh, closer. I get to know my uh, students uh, more uh, out of uh, distance learning because I have to chat them, email them individually to make sure that uh, they are learning. So that's uh, my experience with regards to distance uh, learning. Ayan. So we are now at 61%. Selecting next. Okay. So let's do another uh, giveaway. Okay. Okay. Another giveaway. <laughs> okay. So this time, uh, what you have to do is comment down ulit. Hashtag Adobe Edu Creative. This time. Ayan. Comment down in uh, Sir Joe Mark's uh, YouTube channel. Preferably his latest uh, video. Ayan. Comment down. Adobe Edu Creative. Okay. Our giveaway. Uh, in this instance. Okay. <laughs> okay. Moving forward. Uh, let's check out uh, uh, how we can learn about the educational and social emotional uh, benefits of sharing creativity for all students no matter uh, how young and uh, how young at, at heart they are When students know that their work will be shared, seen, or commented on by others besides their instructor, something magical can happen. Suddenly, learning becomes deeper and more meaningful. Students gain confidence and begin to develop other essential 21st century skills that will empower them to flourish in all walks of life. Research shows that sharing work changes learning. Students become more engaged and motivated to do their best start to believe in the personal value of their work and unique voice. Acknowledge that the work they do is meaningful and purposeful. Think carefully about designing for a specific, tangible audience. And begin to build bonds of trust, develop empathy, and establish their own avenues of sharing with other people in their lives. Adobe's creative tools encourage sharing, collaboration, and the celebration of creative work. In your creative classroom, students can share informally, early, and often with peers, family members, or with you to facilitate rapid feedback. They can create portfolios of their work that show their iterative creative thinking process all the way to final projects. Portfolios can be made anytime after a week, a semester, or to showcase student creativity across an entire year, program, or degree. Students can also present their creative work in more formal and professional ways through a video or presentation, a podcast, or in seminar or conference. In the process, they learn the conventions of professional displays of information using digital media. Let's hear from some educators who've developed motivational ways to encourage students to share their creative work. When you are fearless about sharing your work and you're using your authentic voice to tell your story and to hone your personal brand, there is nothing more rewarding than receiving feedback. And in time, the more you put yourself out there and you keep honing that voice and that story and those messages you're trying to craft, you become addicted. And then you're a lifelong learner and there's no turning back. I think the ability of sharing your work, especially in social media and strategic communication classes is really powerful. And I feel that having students being able to do that, and they're gonna be sharing this work as well as they're applying for internships and jobs um, in the workplace. It's so crucial to get different perspectives and you know feedback on the assignments and stuff. So I encourage my students all the time to share what they're doing with their family, their friends, their colleagues, and of course, adding these items to their portfolio. 
all of these elements, you know, give students the reassurance that what they're learning and what they're doing in the classroom is impactful. And they're learning, you know, skill sets that will be, again, helpful for them as they're applying for, you know, their dream jobs or internships and opportunities. And so the more, you know, feedback that we're able to give students, you know, in terms of not only ourselves as professors and educators, but other colleagues, um, gives them a well-rounded um, perspective of what they are learning, what they're doing and what they're creating in our classes. Peer feedback, especially um, when it comes to the stage where something that the students are creating is kind of reaching its final form. Having that critical voice to help you see your final product in a different light, just give a different spin on it, it really does help to make good things great. I'm a strong believer in sharing work. You see the impact is beyond what is happening in the classroom. You can see that actually for some students, it's actually opening up their minds for specific career paths. So this is not only a purpose to learning, but this actually mirrors the process that can happen in the workplace. Ayan, okay, so once more, I think it's still open. No, uh, We're having another giveaway. Uh, all you have to do is comment down, hashtag Adobe Edu Creative uh, to Jomark Bakiran's uh, YouTube Ayan, channel. Okay, we're now at 69%. So that's how uh, uh, quick it is and easy it is uh, to take up the challenge of uh, Adobe Creative Educator. Of course, uh, this is a quick rundown of uh, the course, diba. Right? So we're hoping you will uh, get to check out, uh, like for example here, the, the, the additional uh, learnings. For example, you can view the full lesson here on how uh, Adobe Spark can be uh, used in uh, inspiring or injecting creativity into the classroom. Okay, I'm going to select next. Ayan. So choosing the right uh, creative uh, tool. So as you know, guys, uh, Adobe is uh, very popular, of course, with uh, Photoshop. But if uh, your classroom or your school has an uh, Adobe uh, creative uh, cloud licenses, of course, maraming, uh, there's a lot of uh, creativity, cre creativity softwares design softwares uh, available for your students to uh, utilize. And of course, uh, each uh, software has his or her own, own <laughs> uh, strengths. Ayan. So let's check out choosing the right creative tool. Great instructional designers start with learning outcomes and pedagogy, then choose the best tools to suit their creative goals. After all, you wouldn't begin an epic mountain climbing adventure dressed to go surfing. You'd start with your end goal in mind and choose the very best tools, digital or otherwise, to help you and your students to reach their destination. When it comes to creativity, consider three questions when selecting the right tool. Do you want a tool to help students think creatively about the content or subject matter? Having students see written information reformulated in visual or video format can lead to new avenues of thinking or trailblazing insights. Do you want a tool primarily for students to present their thinking in a professional or creative way? The content knowledge they are sharing may not be particularly creative. Still, you want them to present more traditional or linear thinking in creative ways. Are you hoping to increase their digital fluency around particular professional tools? Sometimes mastery of an industry standard tool can be a learning goal in and of itself, thus setting students up for future career and personal digital literacy skills. In the words of creativity and education guru Elaine Starko, learning how to do technical presentations well is an important goal in and of itself. It is just not the same goal as having students use the content information in creative ways. Both kinds of goals can be useful. Just be sure you are clear what you are aiming for. Let's hear from creative educators like you 
about how they think through choosing the best creative tools for their students. The way I go about choosing which creativity tool to share with students to use just depends on the project. If it's something that I want them to do a recap, uh, share what they're learning, they could do that either through a video creation tool, they can do it through a music creation tool or a photography tool. It's just, I'd like to leave it kind of open, share with them all the different tools and teach them up front. And then at one point, they have the choice. When it comes to teaching the tools to students, I always start first and foremost with the pedagogy. What are my learning outcomes? What do I need these students to learn? And then I work my way backwards from there when it comes to selecting the tools. When it comes to teaching the tools, I'm a lifelong learner myself. And I believe first and foremost and always starting with empathy and putting myself in their shoes. Because even though I've been using the Adobe Creative Tools for a really long time now, I'm still constantly learning and relearning them myself. There are so many Adobe tools to choose from that sometimes you may think, well, which ones do you, do you select for different projects? It does actually depend on the nature of the project. If the learning outcomes for a particular assignment are based around print production, I would select, for example, a, a combination of InDesign, Illustrator, Photoshop, perhaps. And I like to integrate or to have students collaborating across um, different tools. I like them to maybe start off in Photoshop Sketch move on to Photoshop, and then share their work on social media through Adobe Spark Post. Quite often when it comes to choosing the right tools for the outcome, I somewhat leave it open to a certain degree, and I let the students choose um, within a specific range, knowing that these tools, these are the tools that can do the job. Um, and again, I do that because I know that's how it works in the professional industry as well. There's certain things that help me to choose certain software over the others is um, just how easy it is to use the ability of the students that are about to embark on this journey and um, sometimes there are certain tools that can be used in a specific way uh, collaboratively it's like a, I'm like a kid in a candy store there's so much to choose from it's, 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 it's brilliant so what I try to do is give students a range of options so for those students who are very skilled in their video editing or photo design uh, capabilities, I say, okay, well, this is where you do Photoshop and design, uh, from be a pro, uh, go for it. But then for those students who really need a couple, you know, their handheld or that need, need the extra reassurance and guidance, I give them Adobe Spark, Adobe Premiere Rush, um, but tons of resources, tons of materials to give them options. So I used Adobe tools to help educators and students extend their learning, create content, share their ideas through video, through graphics, through photography. I have a media and production background, and when it comes to teaching journalism students, there is no better tool on this planet than Adobe Premiere Rush. Students can be out in the field, shooting and interviewing on their phone, editing that footage, adding audio, doing some color correction, and then literally shooting it up to social media, particularly if it's breaking news, right then and there in the field. Okay, we're down to the last, 12. Okay, so further reflection now is a good opportunity to reflect on the, what we have learned. So okay, with, just, with this uh, uh, short <laughs> span of time, okay, we have learned uh, about designing our own uh, creative uh, course, okay? So let me click next now, and we're now at 84%, which means the rest is now up to us uh, to create the assignment part. Okay, so let's check out how to submit and uh, share your project. Congratulations, you've almost completed Adobe's Design Your Creative course for higher ed. To meet all the requirements for this course and to make the first step towards obtaining your Adobe Creative Educator Level 2 badge, you'll need to create, 
share, and submit your own creative learning activity. This is a moment to draw on everything you've learned about instructional design for creativity in this course and deepen your professional practice in areas like creating learning outcomes, scaffolding, structuring feedback, adapting for distance learning, incorporating culturally responsive, accessible learning opportunities, and more. Please use the template provided for you with the assignment materials designed by the Adobe Education team in collaboration with other Adobe Master Teachers. Your learning activity can be any length, from a short activity to a multi-day lesson, unit, or full curriculum, whatever is most timely and relevant for your teaching. Regardless of the size, type, or format of the learning activity you're designing, ensure you incorporate these four steps. Clearly state the creative learning outcome. List the learning steps, sequencing, and guidance students will need to be successful, including opportunities for personalization, feedback, and sharing. Use an Adobe tool to enhance learning and accessibility, including any steps, guidance, or materials your students may need to learn the tool. Finally, be sure to upload your activity as a teaching resource on the Adobe Education Exchange. Your final submission for this course will be a link to your uploaded edX resource. And while you're in the sharing mood, we encourage you to share the link with fellow teachers and members of your education community using hashtag Adobe EduCreative to engage in the global conversation. Let's take a look at learning activities other educators have created for further inspiration. One of my favorite lessons that I developed for the Education Exchange is about teaching students, in particular freshmen in a college writing course or a history course, to analyze the credibility of a podcast. A lot of the times we take what we hear for granted and in this strategy, it's a two hour strategy, students evaluate the credibility of a podcast and then they present their findings in Adobe Spark page. It's really interesting because they listen to and they read a transcript of a podcast. They then search for the authors of that podcast to, to find out who they are, to source them and to corroborate their stories. They have to carefully analyze that podcast as well as check the sources that the podcast authors use and then present what they've found in a creative and professional way using Spark Page. As a social science teacher, one of the things that I hope is an enduring understanding is that students grow as critical thinkers and that they leave my classroom with many more questions about the world around them than they had when they first entered my classroom. For the better lesson on protest music. The reason that this lesson resonates the most with me is that as a teenager, music was so important to me, as I think it is to so many teenagers, as they're trying to navigate their identity and who they are and find music and art as a form of expression. So by asking students to explore protest music throughout time and to choose songs regardless of their political views, regardless of their country of origin, students are not only able to follow through lines of history, but they're able to show me a glimpse into who they are and what's important to them. Each one of my students has an opportunity to give me a little glimpse into who they are and I have the opportunity to build that relationship. You've seen what can be done. Now, it's your turn. We can't wait to see what you create. Okay, so that is uh, the assignment for uh, Adobe Creative Educator uh, Level 2. So this one is, I think, is much more... Uh, uh, more uh, task-oriented, uh, it has uh, thrown in a fair amount of uh, tasks. So once more, uh, feel free to uh, watch uh, the replay for this. Okay, and let's check out the assignment uh, part one, lesson plan. So they provided us a uh, template here to create an activity or lesson for students. Okay, timing overview should be comprehensible and ready to use with learners. And uh, like I, what I've mentioned before, 
we are uh, tasked uh, to utilize an Adobe tool. Okay? So, may it be Adobe Spark, Ac Acrobat, or uh, any of the creative uh, cloud uh, apps. Okay? And when you use your template, you will be prompted to make your own uh, Google Docs uh, copy. So, rename it and start your work. Let's check out with the template with directions. Okay? Make a copy. Okay, this is the template with the specific directions. So choose a title for your assignment, author name. Okay, this is an overview. Three to five short sentences. Painting a picture, for example, what students will materials and resources. Instructions, uh, feedback. Optional tutorial for your Adobe Creative uh, tool. So this is the section we're in. Uh, will be uh, mentioning instructions specifically uh, with an Adobe uh, Adobe tool. Okay, so let's check the empty uh, template. Making a copy. Okay, so again, from the word itself. It's an empty uh, template, but still it has uh, some optional tutorial for your uh, creative tool. Okay, so how about empty template Word doc version? So still the same. Uh, same with materials and example, like Adobe products, student sample, rubric. The same with uh, the copy of uh, assignment template with uh, directions about template when an activity completed within it. Let's make a copy. Okay, so this one is a sample from Matt, a person in time online. Two to three hours. Have you ever once? Socials to learn and create, historical figure, materials and resources, Adobe Spark, learn and explore, create, feed, feedback, share, and once more, an Adobe uh, creative tool. Okay, so let's check again the other, the first uh, example. Once more, uh, you need to mention the, the time for the course, overview, uh, the objectives, what resources uh, will be used. And under the instructions, of course, uh, from what we have seen a while ago, we need to have a feedback. And uh, write how students can share their creative work okay let's so let's check uh, another example so once more guys this the assignment uh, your work should be posted in Adobe uh, Education Exchange as well so this one was made December 10 okay description Premier Rush uh, was utilized for this, including uh, Spark. Okay. So feel free to check out the other uh, examples. And the for the part two, please create a, a one minute video answering the following prompt. So, as an Adobe Creative Educator, how do you bring creativity in your instructional practice and uh, students' experience? Your video can be created using the following app. So, I think this is the, the, the most uh, easiest, the easiest of uh, the two uh, assignments or tasks. So, this is uh, simply recording yourself, a talking head using Adobe Spark, Premiere Rush, or uh, Premiere 
Pro and have them uploaded or share your Adobe or YouTube link as uh, shown below together with the lesson uh, plan. So here, if you are here to obtain Adobe Creative uh, Level 2 badge, make sure you have completed, of course, Level 1. Okay, so here's the follow-up email just in case because this is uh, meticulously uh, checked by a, by a human, of course. And afterwards, they'll be sending you the badge. So again, patience. Okay, so if you're looking for more ins ins uh, inspiration, of course, Adobe uh, Exchange is uh, the place uh, for that. Okay, I'm sharing uh, you guys the link, okay, on the details of the uh, assignment. Okay, scrolling down, selecting next. And uh, here's the section, the last section we're in. We will be typing in uh, our uh, assignment. So once more, part one, please create a lesson plan uh, using the provided template. Once more, these are uh, the sample uh, templates, uh, four of these. Uh, the best one is, of course, uh, the one with the lesson example by Matt Nemitz. I hope I'm not butchering his name. And the first one, uh, copy, uh, the one with the detailed description. Okay. So again, for the part two, it's simply recording your uh, yourself, uh, preferably a talking head. Once more, a talking head is uh, the viewers can see uh, who you are, your face, you uh, talking, okay, in the video. So once more, using Adobe Spark, Premiere Rush, and uh, Premiere Pro. So with this template, you'll be writing them all down here in this section. Add your uh, assignment. So let me recheck the previous one so this is how uh, your the first assignment will be uh, looking like okay so you get in to type in uh, the your title so in this uh, example it, it's uh, soundscape okay and the description the products you so uh, for this example, he utilized uh, Spark and the uh, Premiere Rush. Okay, and then after uh, after this, you'll be inputting, uh, placing the link as well for the talking head, and click the next uh, button. So it's simple as that. Okay, so uh, for the fo follow up for uh, this. Uh, uh, live stream uh, Adobe Creative Educator Level 2 we will be uh, doing another uh, live stream wherein we'll be showing you uh, how we or how I have uh, created my own template and possibly share uh, another uh, titles or examples for you to uh, draw in inspiration okay Okay, and as a uh, <laughs> as a bonus, so if you have uh, nothing, uh, if you're just chilling out tonight, okay, recall that it requires us uh, to use any of the three, probably Premiere Rush uh, or Premiere Pro. Okay, so if you are my connection in LinkedIn, I'm I'm going to be sharing this course uh, to you guys learning Premiere Pro. Okay, I'm going to be sharing this to all of my connections. Okay, I'll be, uh, in addition, I'll be sharing the link for you guys. So this is an additional uh, reference to help you out uh, create the 
of course, uh, the video. Okay? So once more, everyone will get to have access uh, to this course. Granted that you are uh, my connection in LinkedIn. So looking forward to see you all completing Adobe Creative Educator Level 1 and 2. Best wishes. Okay, so once more, if you're my connection in LinkedIn, you'll be having access to this course. Okay, and uh, for better viewing experience, you can also uh, suggesting you download the app. Okay, LinkedIn Learning has an app uh, uh, for this. Okay. So course uh, shared. So once more, if you're my one of my connections in LinkedIn, you'll be having access uh, to that course uh, that I have uh, shared to you a while ago. Okay, let me check. So here it is. Just uh, click on the link and uh, you'll be directed to LinkedIn Learning, okay? So again, the we're... Process of manipulating and editing video. Okay, thank you, Ashley. So we hope this helps. Once more, uh, free course um, shared to you guys to help you out complete uh, the Adobe Creative Educator Level 2, specifically utilizing a video. And uh, for the follow-up of uh, for this uh, live stream, we'll be doing another live stream we're in i'll be sharing to you the the output uh that i have uh, made and as a promise okay so to all who have uh, registered tonight okay so the the rules are Okay, the terms are you have uh, to claim your prize within an hour. So, of course, we will reward all who were still, <laughs> were still uh, here and uh, supported us tonight. And yeah, once more, hoping to see you guys getting that badge and hoping to see that badge uh, reflected in your LinkedIn accounts okay so for our uh first uh, winner for tonight's uh, raffle draw with adobe creative educator educator level two is is uibel m dumagsa ayan so if uibel is still there uh, she has to uh, message me right away in LinkedIn. Okay, so once more, this raffle draw is uh, serves as a reward for all of our friends who are <laughs> who are still here in the live stream. Yeah, and for our last uh, winner. Okay, so it's uh, Lady Me Kabasan. Okay, so Lady Me Kabasan, if you're uh, still there, message me in LinkedIn. Uh, and uh, also to claim your prize, uh, I think uh, our guys, our friends in Mechani Web will be requesting you to uh, subscribe into their uh, channels. And guys, I'm uh, hoping you will also subscribe to my. <laughs> to my YouTube channel as well. So guys, uh, good evening everyone and uh, we hope this uh, helped you and hope you can uh, spread and uh, share the word on how easy uh, it is to complete uh, Adobe Creative Educator Level 2, okay? <music>
Okay, and uh, lastly, we, we would like to give recognition, of course. Filipino time is always on time. Ayan. So, I hope uh, this is one of our uh, traditions uh, whenever we're doing live stream and on-site training. So, I would like to give recognition to our uh, first commenter way before uh, the live stream ha has started. So, I would like to give recognition to uh, Albert. Aaron Chavez. Okay, so you also won. Uh, this serves as our token of appreciation. Uh, to all those who won, please uh, message me in uh, LinkedIn on how to claim your uh, uh, prize. But basically, I think the request of our friends in MechaniWeb is still be subscribing uh, and joining their uh, pages, YouTube channels. And guys, hoping to see you as well in my uh, YouTube uh, channel, okay?